Hi, this is Elliot Fisherman, and welcome to our latest vodcast. And we are trying to think of new and greater uh, lectures. And uh, sometimes we update things, but we're going to have a whole bunch of new ones coming up. And this one's on CT of lymphoma involving the liver. And it's interesting, we talk about GI lymphoma, and you talk about it typically involves the stomach, small bowel or colon, uh, and particularly the stomach. We know it's associated with H. pylori infection, uh, typically B cell lymphoma. We talk about how lymphoma in general has a range of appearances that can simulate other processes from adenocarcinoma to GIST tumors. Uh, primary GI lymphoma, again, those two common subtypes. So we're thinking about those organs, but actually we forget to think about other things, and one of them is lymphoma. Now, when we talk about lymphoma of the liver, we can talk about a patient who has extensive disease, maybe lots of nodes, and also has involvement of the liver. But there's some patients who have lymphoma of the liver, and that's their presentation. And this article makes the point that primary hepatic lymphoma is a rare primary liver tumor due to its clinical and radiologic resemblance to metastasis. It is frequently uh, not diagnosed preoperatively, but intra or postoperatively. And since chemotherapy is the treatment of choice for lymphoma, uh, if we can make or suggest a diagnosis, then a biopsy might be done, and the whole management of the patient would indeed change. Now, primary lymphoma is indeed very rare, 0.16 of all non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Of all primary extranodal non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, 0.4% arise in the liver. Uh, on the Hopkins registry, 1.1% of all primary hepatic tumors were primary uh, lymphoma. So it indeed is rare. The incidence of hepatic involvement in lymphoma is up to 20-ish percent. And so we know that when we stage patients, we look very carefully at the liver. We also know that at times CT particularly is not that sensitive in the sense that lymphoma can be infiltrating rather than focal lesion. So it can be somewhat tricky. And this article, uh, Stellar, also makes the point that initial presentation, a third of patients present with a solitary nodule, while another third have multiple lesions, and the remaining have diffuse infiltration. So you can see that the appearance of lymphoma in the liver, primary lymphoma, is a range of possibilities. There's no one appearance. Now, if you ask me how does it look, on CT, typically it's a hypodense lesion that may not be seen at all or poorly seen, particularly on the arterial phase imaging. Occasionally, there's some rim enhancement, kind of like cholangiocarcinoma, but my experience is that that's rare. And calcifications are also exceedingly rare. Liver involvement by secondary non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is relatively common. Primary lymphoma is rare. Okay, so again, going back to that point. So let me show you some cases, and I thought the cases would be very helpful. And you can look at this patient, and you see a arterial phase imaging, and you see a CTA from that same set of data. I have to admit, maybe there's some parenchymal changes in the liver. The liver is not enhancing as dense as the spleen, but it's hard to make much out of that scan. And then you look at the vessels. Perhaps there, the vessels seem to be stretched. So maybe there's something going on infiltrating. Here's the same patient again, a few more images. And if you look really hard on these images, perhaps you see that the texture looks a little bit irregular. Perhaps, you know, you wonder if something's going on. But you have to admit, you are surprised when I show you the venous phase imaging and show you how extensive this patient's tumor is within the liver. Retrospectively, you look back, you can see a little bit closer where some of the tumors are. But again, look how extensive the tumor is. This is a very nice example. This looks like metastatic colon cancer or metastatic melanoma or something else, perhaps. No splenic involvement. Just a beautiful example of how lymphoma looks. So you can see that multifocal disease. And if I showed you this case alone, you would say, Where's the primary? You would not be thinking lymphoma as your first, second, or probably third choice. You'd be thinking of 
metastatic disease GI primary. Here's the images in the coronal plane. So again, it's important to recognize that perhaps we can consider lymphoma a grade mimicker. And you know from plain film days of looking at bone involvement by lymphoma, looks like a sarcoma, looks like a number of different things. And we talk about lymphoma in the kidney, which can look when it's solitary, like a papillary renal cell carcinoma. So we're not surprised that lymphoma can mimic disease. Now, in this article, looking at the CT appearance of lymphoma, four of 18 patients presented with a single focal lesion, 13 patients had multiple lesions, one had diffuse infiltration. And that probably is a reasonable, um, reasonable distribution. On CT, three patients showed gradual progressive contrast enhancement in the lesion. Lesions remained isodense to the liver on the arterial phase with mild enhancement in the portal phase and washout on the delayed phase imaging in two patients. In 13 patients, it showed multiple hypodense non-enhancing lesions, which was very much like my last case. So again, you can see a range of appearances. So let me show you a couple cases. Here's a coronal view, and you see an infiltrating lesion in the dome of the liver on arterial phase imaging, and you also see something in the spleen. Here it is a little bit better on the venous phase imaging. Large mass in the liver, and again, cholangiocarcinoma. It's not cirrhotic, but I guess I could exclude hepatoma, though it should be more vascular. Metastatic colon cancer, many, many things. Well, you think of lymphoma? Well, you have that splenic lesion, but I have to admit the splenic lesion is not all that impressive, but it's not a cyst. It's a solid lesion. And here's another set of images. So you can see that it's, again, under that category of gray mimicker. I don't think our first choice was lymphoma, though we did consider it. And here's that same patient when you get a PET scan. Marked uptake within the liver, marked uptake in that splenic lesion. Just a very, very nice appearance. So again, you can see some of the challenges and that overlap between lymphoma and other tumors. Another example, uh, here's a case where you see a, what looks like a mass in the porta hepatis, also in the liver. Again, you can see stretching of the vessels. And when you look at it a little bit more carefully, again, you see tumor in the right lobe of the liver, very bulky, nodes in the porta hepatis. I think when you start seeing the nodes in the porta hepatis, you could think of other tumors. Remember, a colon cancer. <clears throat> colon cancer can involve the right colon, extend to nodes in the portal cable space, and involve the liver. But perhaps lymphoma would be something you would consider as well. And again, here there's a little bit of splaying of the vessels, but it's not quite as impressive. And here's a second look at that as well. So you can see the appearance when you start seeing a liver mass in portal nodes or peripancreatic nodes you got to at least be considering lymphoma. And this is just another couple images just showing you a lot of the appearances. So when I do see nodes in the portal space or peripancreatic space, sometimes it simulates a pancreatic cancer. We see nodes there from breast cancer, from lymphoma, recurrent right colon cancer. We can see nodes there from melanoma. And here's just a couple more appearances. And again, look at the patient's tumor. And you can see the tumor in the patient's left lobe of the liver um, is, is a hypodense mass. There's nothing really special about the lesion, but indeed just a very, very nice example. And to show you a similar case, if you look at this example, there's some intrahepatic ducts, and if you look hard, there seems to be more enhancement centrally in the liver, and there's something also infiltrating around the vessels in the hilum. And if you go from arterial to venous phase imaging, you really see that nicely. The portal vein is encased, it's narrowed but patent, and you have common duct dilatation. But there's something going on infiltrating in the hilum of the liver. We can see that again as we look at the coronal views and the encasement of the patient's hepatic artery, GDA, and on the branching and stretching of the vessels. And again, on the venous phase, that infiltration. And so one of the patterns we mentioned of uh, lymphoma in the liver is infiltration. Sometimes an infiltration also has the adenopathy. It's subtle, but you see the vessels are distorted. Again, you might think of cholangia, but cholangia is better defined with rim enhancement. You might, and you, you do have duct dilatation, so that would be good for cholangio. 
Hepatoma usually doesn't give you duct dilatation, and of course you might consider metastatic disease as a likely scenario. And again, just a couple more pictures showing you the infiltration and encasement around the patient's portal vein and stretching hepatic artery. Now, of course, when you see liver lesions and splenic lesions, remember the first case I showed you, big liver mass, solitary splenic lesion. Here you see multiple splenic lesions, multiple hepatic lesions. And of course, you also see large nodes in the celiac chain. You see large bulky nodes into the hilum, paraortic region. So it's very extensive, and here's just a coronal view showing you that. I think in this scenario, the diagnosis of lymphoma is fairly straightforward. I wouldn't consider this primary lymphoma because you have multifocal disease from spleen to adenopathy, very well shown there. And when you think about it, and the point being that liver and spleen, what gives you both organs involved? Lymphoma, I always think about lymphoma. Metastatic disease, think about melanoma. Infection, but then again, it's usually immunosuppressed patient. Uh, candidiasis is a very good thought. And then, of course, the disease that always mimics lymphoma, wherever it is, and that's going to be sarcoidosis. <clears throat> so let me show you a few examples. Here's metastatic melanoma. Again, very similar. Multiple splenic lesions. This is the arterial phase. Multiple liver lesions. Again, kind of poorly visualized and better visualized as we go to the patient's venous phase. There's also a lesion by the adrenal glands bilaterally. Multifocal disease, if you said this was lymphoma, I couldn't argue with you, but that melanoma and lymphoma can look very, very much the same. Here's another set of images. So again, one of the challenges we have is we always think about metastasis before we think about lymphoma. So I just wanted to show you the spectrum and overlap, and here's just one more case of a patient with metastatic bladder cancer to liver and spleen. It's pretty rare for bladder to go to spleen, and this appearance, bulky nodes in the hilum, would have been good for lymphoma, right? Would have been good for lymphoma, good for melanoma. I would not have picked bladder cancer. That's kind of a very unusual case. And the last thing I'll mention in terms of what else can look like lymphoma or what lymphoma can be confused with might be sarcoidosis. Sarcoid is very common in the liver, but we don't see that many lesions. Most of the time it's infiltrating. Uh, you can see multifocal disease, metastatic disease, lymphoma, and often this is read as lymphoma. But this patient had no real symptoms, had some mild trauma, and sure, it could be lymphoma, but you got to think sarcoidosis. Sarcoid commonly, another example, involves the liver, commonly involves the spleen, and if you don't think about it, and the patient often doesn't have a history of sarcoid, you're scanning the abdomen for some vague pain or some symptoms or a trauma, so you need to think about that possibility. And these cases, and this next case, which shows nodes in the hilum, liver and splenic disease, that, that overlap between lymphoma and sarcoid is very real. So again, uh, history can be very helpful. Symptoms can indeed be very helpful. So it's important to think about that possibility. So you can see very nicely we've covered primary lymphoma of the liver. And the points I wanted to make is that it's an uncommon lesion. Again, secondary involvement of the liver in a patient with diffuse lymphoma is indeed more common. Again, infiltration, solitary masses, multiple masses. But I think what we need to recognize is at times you need to think about the possibility of lymphoma. You see hepatic mass and you see lots of nodes in the porta hepatis, you better think about lymphoma. You see a liver mass, solitary, multiple, infiltrating, and you see something in the spleen. Yes, it could be a number of things, but you better think about lymphoma. And sometimes you see a liver mass, and if the patient has no other history, and you know or you feel it's going to be malignant, perhaps to put down the possibility of lymphoma, uh, again, you know, with solid liver masses, if you're in a place where surgeons like to go to surgery without biopsy, uh, the thought of saying lymphoma will force them to biopsy because lymphoma would be non-surgical patient. You get chemotherapy, you should do fine. So hopefully we share that with you and you learn something and we'll see you next time.
Have a great day.